Can I retire at 61 with $1.2 million in retirement investments and retirement savings? That's what we're going to talk about today on the Your Financial EKG YouTube channel. My name is Drew Blackston. I'm a certified retirement counselor, investment advisor representative, and I am your virtual financial advisor, helping you get to retirement, helping you get through retirement, and protecting your ability to stay in retirement. Now, we're talking about a 61 and 59-year-old couple. They've got $1.2 million in retirement investments, and they're asking the question, can I retire? How how long is my retirement income going to last? When should I claim Social Security? And what about taxes? And we're going to look at that and we're going to go in more depth and detail today than I normally do. This is a couple, they live in California, so taxes are a big deal to them. And so we want to look at when is the best time to claim Social Security? What's that going to do to our taxes? And what do we do about our qualified retirement account money? All right, so let's go to the board real quick, get a quick synopsis of who they are, and then let's get into the retirement planning. So we've got Cole and Martha. Cole is 61, Martha is 59. In income, Cole gets a pension of $2,600 a month. Martha's working, she gets $4,700 a month net from her job. Social Security, that's the question. They want to know when do they file? Do they file at 62? Do they file for Social Security at 67? Do they file for Social Security at 70? We're going to look at that. Remember, if they file at 62, they only get 70% of their total benefit. If you file at your full retirement age for Social Security, you get 100% of your full benefit. And if you wait to 70, you get 124% of your Social Security benefit. Now, keep in mind, at any time between 62 and 70, you can claim Social Security. So 63, 64, 65, 66, we're going to look at that, all of those options for them. All right. Now, they have a home that's worth $1.2 million. It is uh, under mortgage. So they have a mortgage on this house, so it's not completely paid for. They've got about $1.2 million in retirement assets. And how that's broken down is like this. They've got $160,000 in the bank, so it's cash. They've got a 401k that's got $340,000 in it. This is Cole's 401k, and this is where we're going to look for a tax strategy because this is the money he's retired. We're going to roll it over from his 401k into his IRA, and we're going to kind of think about a way that we can alleviate some taxes, maybe not so much now, but in the future. And I'm going to show you how most people think if they do tax planning, especially with IRAs, they think I'm going to pay a ton of tax money. I'm going to show you how you're not going to pay a ton of tax money and get your retirement income tax free. In a brokerage account, they've got $500,000. In an IRA, they have $272,000 and $30,000 in two separate IRAs. And in a Roth account, they have $73,000 for a total of approximately $1.2 million in retirement investments. So we're going to look at three things. How long is our retirement income going to last? When do we collect Social Security? And what about taxes, especially on this $340,000 in 401k. Are you ready? Let's go. All right, so let's look at Cole and Martha's situation. They've got $1.2 million in retirement investments and retirement savings. And we're going to look at three question marks that they have in their retirement planning. The first is when do I take Social Security? The second, how long is my retirement income going to last? And the third, what about taxes? Remember, they're in a high tax state. They live in California. So we're going to look at their federal taxes and their state taxes and see if we can lower their taxes, maybe not in the short term, but in the long term. I think we can all agree that because of where our national debt is, because of government spending, because of our social obligations, Social Security, Medicare, um, we're going to have to raise taxes. Taxes. And I don't like that, but we're going to have to raise taxes and we need to look at ways that we can get our retirement assets tax free. Roth IRAs, life insurance, things like that. So we're going to look at that for coal and for Martha, but we're going to use Cole's 401k. So let's get into this right now. Now remember, Cole's 61, Martha's 59. She's making $56,400 for her job. Okay. Remember, Cole has a pension 
They're both looking at starting Social Security. Now, this is where we've already done the analysis. We already know that Cole's going to take it at 62 and Martha's going to take it at 65. And I'm going to show you kind of the thought process behind that here in just a second. Here's Cole's pension, $2,600 a month. So let's go to the Social Security and why we chose age 62 and age 65. Remember, if you watch any of these videos on YouTube, not my videos, but other financial advisor videos or other financial people on YouTube. Not everybody's a financial advisor. But if you look at their social security videos, they say, hey, wait to 70, wait to full retirement age, get your most benefit. That's the best thing you can do. But that doesn't fit everybody's situation. They're giving generalized information. So what I want to do is get individualized information. I want to have a strategic retirement plan. And so we're going to look at Cole and Martha and say, okay, when does it make the most sense for you to take Social Security? So if we're looking at their estimation, this is their filing for Social Security. This is Cole over here, and this is Martha over here. Now for Cole, if he files at 62, his cumulative benefit would be 511560 What that means is if he takes Social Security at 62 and he lives as long as the mortality table expects him to do, to 82. So right now, 84 and 82 are the mortality tables for females and males. 84 for female, 82 for males. So we're looking at how much in benefit will he collect between age 62 and 82? Now, it's an unfor un unfortunate situation if he, if he doesn't live that long, and it's actually a fortunate situation. He's taking money out of the pocket of Social Security if he lives longer than that. So for him, finally at 62, he would have $511,560 between ages 62 and 82. If he files at full retirement age, if he waits another five years to 67, he would have a cumulative benefit of $556,000. Well, when we got talking, it was only about a $40,000 difference, but he had to wait five extra years to get an extra $40,000 for 20 years. That just didn't make sense for him. And I'm not talking $40,000 extra per year. I'm talking $40,000 in a 20-year period. And so for him, it just doesn't make sense. So we're going to start taking his Social Security at 62. Now, for Martha, we're going to wait until 65. The reason for that is she's going to continue to work based on where her age is, where Cole's age. It just made sense for her to wait until 65. So their Social Security benefits are going to be $1,900 a month for Cole at 62 and $2,000 a month for Martha at 65. Okay, so check mark box number one. When do we take Social Security? Again, it's not just a blanket answer. We are individualizing this. We're carefully planning this because listen, you get one shot with Social Security and you want to make sure you get the right number and you take it at the right date. Now listen, if you want me to do a Social Security estimator for you, look at your retirement income, make sure that you're on track to get to retirement, through retirement, and protect your ability to stay in retirement, go to my website. I put a link in the comments below. Download the free booklet, The Roadmap to Retirement. When you download that, it's going to ask you, hey, do you want to talk to an advisor? Click that button. You get to talk to me, and we can go through your financial EKG. See when it makes the most sense for you to file for Social Security. Maybe it's 62. Maybe it's 65. Maybe it's 70. But we don't know until we look at your individualized plan. We can also look at your retirement income, your retirement assets, and make sure that you are on track for retirement. Now, first thing, when do we take Social Security? Check that mark, that box off. What was the second thing? We want to look at taxes. Taxes. So let's go to their taxes real quick. So right now, for the year 2022, tax-wise, they're in the 7.98% projected federal rate. Their taxes for California, their projected rate for California is 7.75. So in wages, 56400 that's how much Martha's pulling in every year. There's that pension, 31200 for coal. So their gross income is 87600 Now we have a standard deduction, married, filing jointly. It's 25900 So that puts their taxable income at 61700 Now we have a progressive tax code. So after we go through the progressiveness, right, we go through the process for their taxes, they're actually in the 12% 
federal tax bracket and only 7.98 is their federal tax rate. So the taxes that they paid after deductions and credits is 7.98% of their income. Okay, now you're asking the question, why do we even want to try to lower their taxes? They're already in a low tax rate. Well, here's the reason why. I believe that taxes are going to go up. I think with our federal deficit, I think with our federal spending, I think with our social obligations, Social Security, Medicare, more people retiring, less people working, the taxes are just eventually going to have to go up to support those social programs, our deficit, our military, our spending, everything, now, what good or bad, we need to raise revenues to support our, the U.S. government. And so as taxes go up, it's really going to affect those who are in retirement, those who are on Social Security, those who are using their IRAs, their 401ks, their qualified retirement accounts to live off of. Because as you take money out of those accounts, unless it's a Roth IRA, as you take money out of those accounts, you're paying taxes on that money as if you are working. And you don't have deductions as high as you do if you're you know, if you're like me, I have a business, I have children, so I have higher deductions, higher write-offs. You don't get that as when you're in your 60s and 70s because maybe you don't have a business. Hopefully, you don't have dependents that are at home that you're taking care of. And so in retirement, your taxes could actually be higher than when you're working. So for them, what I want to do is look at taking, let's go over to assets real quick. Cole has a 401k. He's got $340,000 in it. He just retired. So he's going to roll it into an IRA. And I want to look at putting together a Roth conversion plan for him on that $340,000. So let's go up here real quick to scenarios. Roth conversion. Let's open this up. Now, if we go to taxes, let me show you what happens when we do a Roth conversion. Well, actually, let's go back real quick. Let me show you what we're going to do with the Roth conversion. So for Cole, we're going to do a Roth conversion here. We're going to take his 401k, this $311,000. We're going to take $30,000 a year out of that starting January of 2022. So starting right now, we're going to take that $30,000 out and we're going to drive that 401k to zero. So that means we're going to take $30,000 out a year until there's not $30,000 to take out. So if you look, that's why it says insufficient funds here. We ain't got enough money down here. Look at this. In 2033, we're only taking out $14,000 because we've drained the account doing the Roth conversions. So in 11 years, we're able to take a taxable account, a 401k, to tax-free. Now, you might be thinking, oh my gosh, Drew, how much in taxes does he pay? Remember, well, actually, let's go to taxes. I'm getting way too ahead of myself because I'm excited because retirement planning is exciting. Let's go. Let's get out of this. Let's go to taxes. Now, remember his projected federal rate of return I just showed you in this year without doing Roth conversions was 7.98, basically 8%, right? His state tax rate was 7.75, okay? So just a quarter percent less on the state level, which is nuts to me. Move to Florida or Texas or anywhere they don't pay state taxes. <laughs> But his projected federal rate is now only 9.46, just taking $30,000 out a year for the next 11 years and doing a Roth conversion. That, it blows my mind that it's only 2%, really only about 1.45%. That's great. That means that he's going to be able to get a qualified retirement asset, a tax time bomb, as Ed Slot calls it, and get it tax free. Now, let me show you what his retirement account looks like or his assets look like when we do that. Let's go to 2034. And look at this. His Roth conversion account is at $473,000. That means that $311,000 has now turned into $473,000 tax free. And it's going to continue to grow tax free. Look at this. If he never touches it at a hundred, that account is going to be worth $1.3 million tax-free. That's incredible. And as you can see here, they don't have an issue when it comes to 
can I retire? They don't run out of retirement income, okay? So I hope this scenario has given you confidence. I hope that it's inspired you. Look at your accounts. Look at where your taxes are at. Listen, if your advisor's not talking to you about taxes, about Roth conversions, about looking for ways to get your retirement income tax-free, to lower your taxes, maybe you can't get it tax-free, but you can lower it, you need to be talking to somebody who will, and I would be happy to do that for you. Remember, a link is in the comment section. You click on that, download the Roadmap to Retirement. Would love to help you with your retirement planning. But hey, maybe you're not subscribed to the channel. Smash the like button, hit the subscribe button below, and please leave your questions and comments. I do read them all and I respond accordingly. Thank you so much for coming to the Your Financial EKG YouTube channel. I hope you'll come back and join me soon. Make sure to subscribe. God bless. Bye-bye.